I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Arakwell people of the Bunjalung Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Are you ready to win at the game of life? Well, throw out that rule book and get down to the business of being the best and most authentic version of you. Welcome to the Human Design Podcast. We're changing the rules around success, abundance, purpose, love, and life, where we're creating a planet where everyone can thrive in a world that loves and supports each other. I'm your host, Emma Dunwoody, a qualified master coach, human design expert, podcaster, and entrepreneur that is living the life of my dreams, breaking all the rules while doing it, making a huge impact, and living my design and manifesting miracles on the daily. Join me as I break down and simplify everything you need to live in alignment with your human design, teach you how to recondition your unconscious mind for greatness, and to take back your power so you can manifest your heaven on earth and serve the rest of the planet at the same time time. It's time to give up the fear and step into your highest potential, to reach for the stars, to know and live your greatness. It's what you deserve and it's what the planet really needs from you. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. Remember Angie Lee from episode 346? You know the one, the uh, highly successful reflector that has a mastered marketing. She's mastered entrepreneurship and business, speaking and so much more. Well, Angie and her boxer and entrepreneur brother, Mike, have created a line of CBD products to help people heal physical pain and anxiety. Angie actually sent me some of her sleepy gummies and CBD oil drops back before I interviewed her, and they were an absolute game changer for me. Since going through early menopause, my sleep had never been as good as it had been before I went through it. But taking their sleepy gummies has been a game changer and I feel like my sleep is finally back and I'm feeling better than ever. In fact, funny story, Taylor actually tried out their out of office THC gummies while she was over there in the US because obviously she's not allowed to bring them home to me in Australia. And she was not only like super chilled out, um, really it helped her mind slow down and be pretty quiet, which is not very often for her. And she managed to sleep for 12 hours straight. So they were super good. Soul CBD products are designed to address physical pain and anxiety, as these are the challenges that Angie and Mike understand firsthand and struggled themselves with for a long time until creating these products to heal themselves. Their promise to you is that with Soul CBD products, that firstly, wellness never tasted so good. And all their products are scientifically formulated to maximize bioavailability and effectiveness. Everything is grown in the US organically farmed and gluten-free, and they triple test all their batches for potency and safety. Soul CBD are the real deal, made by amazing humans with a sincere mission and high standards to deliver quality and results. So if you want to get your hands on some of these beauties, then follow the link in the show notes for more information. In today's episode, I talk to the incredible Amrit Sandhu. He's an international speaker podcast host and founder of The Inspired Evolution. He's certified by Eckhart Tolle's School of Awakening. He's also Mind Valley's master certified trainer for Australia and India. Amrit delivers keynote talks, seminars and workshops for the Inspired Evolution and Mind Valley in the United States, Europe, Asia and Australia. His gift for sharing impactful ideas and insights with unrivaled enthusiasm enables him to engage audience from all over the world, featuring a wide range of demographics, from corporate environments to construction sites, teenage programs, festivals, retreats, and to the general public. This conversation was epic. Amrit is the real deal and a fellow Aussie, and I trust that you'll enjoy our conversation. Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. I'm super excited to chat to my guest today because I was lucky enough to be on his podcast not so long ago, and the conversation definitely left me wanting to talk to you more. So welcome to the podcast, Amrit Sandhu. How are you? Uh, 
Emma, Sister Bear, it is such a treat to be here. Like you said, we had such a great conversation um, over on the Inspired Evolution podcast. Man, I'm just, yeah, really grateful to be here and just really excited to, to spend more time with you. Amazing, amazing. So you are a fellow coach. Mm. Um, you've done some pretty cool stuff. Like I love that you've done Eckhart Tolle's school. Um, I love Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle, but I've never actually dived into his teachings. Um and Mind Valley. So I really want to talk about Mind Valley as well because Mind Valley were one of the, you know, really impactful parts of my transformational journey. Mm. But before we do, one of the things I love to dive into first, and oh, I nearly forgot, lucky listener, I did not. Um, Amrit is a two for emotional manifester, uh, Cross of Eden. And what I would love to start with is. So many of us find ourselves in this dark night of the soul, this challenge. For me, it was 20 years ago with a diagnosis. Um, and it's this moment where we somehow, somewhere, we find the power within us. We take our power back and we actually start what I believe to really dive into this journey of our purpose, you know, or the, you know, we, we hear about it as the, the hero's journey as well. I would really love to hear, you know, that time for you mm. and you know, the, the, a little bit about the journey to becoming the emirate that is, you know, sitting in front of me today. Yeah, I um, I could spend all day talking <laughs> about this and I'm conscious that we're in a podcast. So um, high level, uh, first time around. So there's been two um, pretty challenging, heavy, dark nights of the soul. But the first one definitely was more significant. Uh, I can't say more significant, but it was more painful. Um, than the second time around. Um, the second time around was death by a thousand cuts, but we can speak to speak to that. So, my first um, big challenge was uh, growing up through adolescence. I grew up with a mixed bag of values. So I grew up with like in an Indian culture in a Western society, and there was like there was almost like one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake, and there was you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was there was a lot of challenges in there. I can articulate it now with great ease in a couple of sentences, but back then it was just, you know, it's just what was going on um, for me as an individual. And if you fast forward into adolescence, that basically landed with me being quite depressed, not being able to express my true self, um, lots of stuff going on mentally, um, and I ended up diagnosed with depression. When I got diagnosed with major depression, um, it was six years of um through the therapy and the, the it was like, hey, you've been in this place for about six years. And uh, it was pretty amazing because for a lot of people, labels don't really serve them. But I clearly remember that moment when I got given the label was actually kind of cool for me um, because it, in the back of my head, it was like, oh, this is that thing that they've all been talking about, that depression thing. Um, and there was some sort of pressure came off the valve because it was like, oh, people do talk about this. So there must be some sort of remedy or cure. Where to from here? Right. Um, so that was really helpful for me. Whereas some people go, oh, being labeled as ADHD or labeled with depression, really like, you know, that then spiraled me further. And I've, I've, I've met plenty of those people through my coaching. Um, but for me, the label was actually really, really helped. Um, and there was two things that the lady said that was my psychologist at the time that, that I was referred to, psychiatrist, sorry, that I was referred to at the time. Um, what she said was, A, you're going to be okay in a few months. And I was like, really? How do you know that? Like a few months, like, you just said I've been going through this for like six years, uh, Min. And so her response was two things. She goes, A, um, you know something's wrong and B, you want to do something about it. And I was like, oh, okay. And I didn't put much like stead in what she just mentioned in those couple of words. But now as a coach, fast forward to where I am now, I'm like, oh, my God, those two things like are absolutely everything. Um, that's sort of you can lead a horse to water but <laughs> – <laughs> can't make a drink so you know you can yeah I've tried in the past now I'm a bit more mature only a bit uh, <laughs> where I used to try and coach you know people that I could see needed support in my you know close community and now I just you know if they're not a yeah. they know something's wrong and be looking to shift so in that one of the cool things she gifted me was um this she gifted me an awareness of where my values were out of alignment and that was really profound. She was like, actually, here's a particular value that you're not living into, which is widely adopted in Western society that you need to try and live into in order to assimilate and integrate better. And I was like, oh, profound. Okay, great. Mm. 
um, the value was that of honesty. And so she gifted me that. And that was actually the pivotal moment because that was the first time I really like stepped into this visceral awareness of like fixed versus growth mindset. Yeah. Prior to that, like Amrit was Amrit was Amrit was Amrit, you know. But at this point it was like, hey, you can install this. And I was like, what? Like Neo in the Matrix, like plug something in, download it off the USB. Like what are you talking about? I can install something. But that's the point where I found myself malleable. Now she, in her infinite wisdom, prescribed me antidepressants. Um, I went home, took my first one. It was amazing, but I didn't want to live life on the up-down roller coaster of, you know, the crutch. So I threw them in the bin, unfortunately. And I don't advise everybody to do that because I'm sure there are people that are tuning into this. Medical disclaimer, you know, just for me, it just didn't feel right in my bones. And we can talk more about that later. But thankfully, my doctor also, who was this Thai lady, bless her cotton socks, used to do some mental health work and she prescribed me mindfulness. And this was, mind you, like over a decade ago now, right? So mindfulness now is like this whole thing, but like 10, 15 years ago, it wasn't a big conversation. So I just happened to have a GP that had referred me to a psychiatrist who called me back to have a chat about how it went and just said, hey, by the way, here's a breathing exercise. And I remember going, breathing exercise? Like, what do you mean breathe? Like, dude, like, you know, typical young Aussie male, like, I've, I've been breathing, like I'm breathing. I'm yeah. sitting here in front of you, aren't I? Like, <laughs> anyway, so that was my kind of response. Anyway, I took the exercise and fast forward a little bit. I'm at university, clearing up my locker, going through all these motions and I start feeling all this anxiety. And I was about to call someone and I started and just happened to have the breathing exercise tucked into the back of a clear case on my mobile phone and went through the breathing exercise. As I started to breathe, the walls that were closing in, I want to say metaphorically, but literally it felt like they were literally closing in, started moving apart as with every breath. And I was just like, what is this? Like, And so I got hooked on mindfulness. Um, and fast forward that journey, I changed states, changed cities. Um, and basically one of the big things that happened was I got kicked out of university. Uh, I was asked to leave um, because of poor academic performance, which was a, which was a lead indicator for me that something was wrong because prior to coming into university, I was always, well, quite academic, um, good at maths, good at sciences, that sort of stuff, typical Indian, good Indian boy. <laughs> you know? um, so that was me, touch wood. And when I got to university and then I was being asked to leave, I was like, what is going on? And then that was what landed me in that and like, you know, losing my relationships, my friends didn't want to know, like it was a whole bunch of stuff came crashing down. It wasn't your everyday run of the mill, like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to walk into the GPs off. Like my whole world collapsed for me to yeah. land in a GP psychologist chair. So that was um, Dark Night of the Soul round one. And so to, the tools that got me out of there, because every Dark Night of the Soul, as you know, has that you come back with the sword that you slay the dragon with. So the dragon being depression, the sword for me, was mindfulness and meditation. And it was incredible for me because the level of self-awareness that it gave me, I started to, and then I started to really dive deep in, started to realize, oh, thinking about the past is depressing, thinking about the future is anxiety, and that's why they're being treated one and the same because the big issue is, talking about Eckhart Tolle's work, you're not anchored in the present. You're not yeah. here now, yeah, um, which, you know, there's no demonizing the past. Being able to learn from our mistakes is where civilization got to here from, right? And being able to plan for the future has been incredible. This is how civilization exists, right? Like planning. Um, as a life coach, obviously, I'm here to try and help where you're going. Um, and therapists are here to help clear out, you know, where you've been. Um, but in there, like the, the challenge is we spend spending too much time in the past or too much time in the future and not having a relationship with you yourself being presently anchored in the present moment. Um, that's where your true authentic self really lies. That's where all the healing begins. That's where everything is. So that was a huge um, sword, if you if you call it that, that I came back with. And on the back of that, having that relationship with it, I went back to it. I moved two cities, eventually got to the city my girlfriend was in through, you know, that was the, the loopholes I had to jump and jump through um, and got to a point where went back to university, graduated university, graduated university like top of the university. Touch wood. Yeah. And this was not just top of structural engineering, which is what I was studying. It was not just top of engineering. It wasn't just, it was top of like leadership, innovation, and academic excellence across all students in the university for that year when I graduated. Mm, wow. Now, it sounds very gloaty when I say that. And I'm very conscious of that because in Australia here, we have a tall poppy syndrome thing going yeah. on. So it's like, yeah, come on, watch man. yourself. Yeah. Watch what, yourself. What, you, what you saying there, fool? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, in that space, like the key thing though, when I got awarded that award, there was a whole bunch, like obviously I had, there was 
five or six of us that were in the running for it um, because we all had perfect GPAs. Um, and then we'd done a lot of volunteering. We'd done a lot of good work around the community. We, you know, we, you know, we were people that were doing good work in the university. And I remember going through the interview process and at the very last interview, I think it was the second to last or the last question was, why should we give you this award over the other five? And I remember that was one of those moments, I haven't prepared for this question. <laughs> like yeah. this was just like, oh, my God, that's such a great question. I wish I would have thought about it. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> like, And so in that moment what popped out of my mouth was, um, yeah, I look back and it was my truth. It was, you know, in that moment and it was profound because honesty was, you know, what the psychologist all those years ago was like you need to install. And my truth was it would be pretty profound of a story if the guy that got asked to leave university and diagnosed with poor mental health only three years ago, an ode to meditation, mindfulness, whatever you call it, then three years later graduates university, top of university. Like if there's ever an ode to like the impact that mental health plays in one's life, like that would be signed, sealed, delivered. And if you were to gift me this award, I would then use it to inspire others and, you know, speak about the importance of mental health. That would be a responsibility that would be laid upon me with the bestowment of this award. So that's where I feel compelled to share, you know, the delta between where I was and where I got to. Um, I didn't know I was going to have the Inspired Evolution podcast. I'd be talking about it to you here. Like I didn't know that was going to be a thing. Uh, but I was aware that, you know, I wanted to inspire others about, you know, meditation, mindfulness really works. Um, so that to say, hey, Amrit, where's your second dark night of the soul? Sounds like, you know, you're out in the clear in the greens. Um, so with that award, I had the pick of the litter of any job I wanted here in, in Melbourne, here in Australia. And I got the best job that uh, a graduate could get, Touchwood, with my expertise and landed myself in a really, really nice, well-paying job. I remember day one walking into the organisation and looking at the chain of command, if you will, or yeah, basically, and looking up the ladder and going, oh, my God, a lot of the people here aren't embodying the values that I've had to work so hard in the last little while to work through. How's this going to go? And I was like, that's all right. You know, the old Gandhi quote, I am Indian, will be the change that we wish to see in the world. So here I am. And, you know, like we'll just go along till we get along to make the transformation happen. Like I transform, surely the organisation can transform as well. But that was a learning lesson for me. So ensued seven years of career misalignment. And that's where I said earlier, death by a thousand cuts, um, touch wood, you know, it literally felt like, I don't know how much of your audience is uh, Matrix fans, but I literally felt like I was plugged into the Matrix and I was being harvested. Like, I think when I share this from stage around the world, I, I sort of joke a little bit. I say I had my midlife crisis earlier than everybody else, just because most people do nine to fives and I was doing 6am to 6pm, six days a week, and then plus over time. Right. So I just put in the hours up front. And so I just, burnt out for <laughs> touch wood earlier. Yeah. So that was the that was the second big challenge. Um, and what that taught me was it's really important culturally to have your values aligned, but it's not just culturally. Like you also need your work to line up to who you are because, and I think we also went through an interesting shift, I don't know, astrologically, but spiritually, collectively, I think consciousness. Um, what happened in there is before I think there was a time roughly, you know, about 100 years after the Industrial Revolution where you could be like, hey, like I could drink my green smoothie, do my yoga, but spend eight hours doing something I hate. Like we were eat, we were okay being compartmentalized. But about 15, 20 years ago, what started happening is our work life and our personal life, it all started to blur. That's where you remember Google was introducing all these interesting workplaces. You can play table tennis and all this sort of stuff at work, like beanbags at work. Work wasn't this compartmentalized thing where you can trade eight hours of your time, come back and enjoy the rest of your life, where you spend eight hours sleeping, two hours on a commute, you got six hours left, you got to brush your teeth and eat and all that sort of stuff. You got a few hours to yourself. What? Right? So I was really challenged by that. And we can argue that, you know, being a manifester, obviously I didn't belong in a generator's role. Uh, <laughs> um, and we can talk all about that. But I was completely out of alignment with my values. So me building high-rise towers my highest values are connection, contribution, and celebration. There wasn't a lot of connection. There wasn't a lot of contribution. There was a little bit. I was building homes for people somewhat. Um, and then celebration, there wasn't any of that. But now that sort of left me looking for, you know, 
that was the dragon and slaying it was recognizing what my values were and then going down this path of the inspired evolution the sword is what you see here is the inspired evolution um, and living in alignment to my values and encouraging others to do the same and now with the inspired evolution as a podcast host i get to connect a lot i get to contribute heaps i get to celebrate a lot um, as a coach there's a lot of connection really deep there's a lot of contribution really deep there's a lot of celebration uh, public speaker connection contribution celebration so you can sort of see um, how that lines up so long-winded response but you know been through two of those two of those journeys thus far um, and both were um, challenging in their own right um, but both bestowed incredible gifts um, in their own right as well yeah wow oh my god I love the whole story um, and there's so much resonance for me like 20 years ago I was diagnosed with depression and panic disorder and mm -hmm. really similar story to yours, you know, and it was meditation and gratitude that really, you know, moved the needle initially for me. So I love it. I think it's so cool to hear this story because it's, you know, just super on point, if you like. And so much of what you're talking about, like so many people are going through this process. And I love the piece where you just pointed out like 20 years ago, the lines got blurred, you know, and I'm like, yeah, shit. Like 20 years ago was when I was in an advertising agency and the entire creative department would just play bloody pool and ride their goddamn scooters around all day. <laughs> like, like, yeah, totally. It was blurred. And it was that place where, and that's actually where I burnt out for the first time um, a number of years before that. Um, because of the same deal, like they, these people became my family. So I wanted to be there, but instead I was just working from, you know, and, you know, destroying myself. Um, I'm so fascinated by values because I was actually trained to use values as a really powerful tool for coaching, for helping people align to their authentic truth. However, I did not have success with it. Um, I went through this process so many times, like whether it was through my training or, you know, being the, the guinea pig, but they never really stuck to be honest and what's been really fascinating because i've always known the importance of values and being aligned to them you know human design has been this huge way that it's helped me really solidify my highest values and you know like mm. one of my highest values is family but i also have gate 37 in my personality son which is the, the gate of community mm. um you know, peace is a very, very high value of mine and I'm a manifesting generator. So peace, like you as a manifester, it's our signature. So human design has really helped me solidify my values. But can you help us understand, like if we don't, let's say we don't have human design, mm. how do we actually know what our real values are as opposed to the ones that we're kind of just making up from our conditioning? Yeah, cool. It's, uh, yeah, um, that's, a, that's a great question. So in there, I, I generally use the term hijacked and I know that doesn't make a lot of sense at the moment, but I, there's, there's hijacked values, which is what you're talking about, which is that they come from our conditioning. And what I mean by hijacked is like your attention, like, yeah, your, you have your authentic values and you have like these hijacked sense of uh, like sense of values. So the way I do values with people is, is pretty straightforward. Um, and for those that want to go through the exercise, it's bardevolution.com forward slash values, amrit.coach forward slash values, 20 minutes from now, you'll be as clear as I am on my values. So the process is pretty much, it's intuitive and I guide people through a little bit and I basically say, hey, like whatever word, there's like a list of 500 values. It's really primitive. There's like a list of 500 values. You go through, you highlight whatever, any single word that you have an impulse with. Like you go, oh yeah, that stands out for me. Side note, if you see it in others, it's also valuable to you. Yeah. Because like, I'll look at Emma and I'll see strengths. Someone will see Emma and someone will see beauty. Someone will see Emma and someone will see kindness. Which one is it? And it's like, it's all of them. Each of those people are strength, beauty, and kindness, right? Beauty really is in the eye of the beholder. So with a little bit of preface, I guide people into the exercise and then it's just intuitive, bit of music and just go through and highlight everything in a first pass. Generally out of the 500 words, people will generally highlight about 150. 
Then we go through and say, now collate the like terms. Pardon the engineering terminology. I'm an engineer by qualification. So you've got this spirituality engineering and it's like, let's get super grounded on how we can live a spiritually aligned life, right? That's Amrit in a nutshell. (laughs) The rubber's really going to hit the road here. Um, Your soul's got to infuse into the 3D. So, So in there you've got collect the like terms. And so what you have is like you have like wealth, abundance, prosperity. Maybe all of those mean something similar to you, right? And you can sort of click. And the words need to mean what they mean to you. And I think this is where people start to go awry because they'll start to go, oh, yeah, wealth, prosperity, abundance all mean the same thing. Abundance doesn't mean wealth to everybody. For some people, it's health and vitality, yeah? So make the bucket your own. Like feel into the energy of the word and make it like collect the like terms for what they mean to you, not what they mean in a thesaurus. Yeah. Yeah. And at that point you start to put together and you've got about seven buckets, right? It's like, oh yeah, this is my like health bucket. This is my wealth bucket. This is my success and achievement bucket. This is, you know, everybody has their own buckets. And in there I invite people to pull out one or sometimes it's two, but generally one word that put like, that is like, Hey, that's the word that encompasses all those words for me. Like that's got the most aliveness. And I use that word aliveness. Um, like I have a relationship with that word. Like when I b- feel into connection, just to give you a bit of scope on what we're talking about here, connection to me is absolutely connecting to Emma today. It's absolutely connecting to friends all around the world through the podcast and connection through the audience. It's connection to my three-year-old son, my six-month-old son. It's connection to my wife, but it's connection to the trees. It's connection to the rivers. It's connection to the mountains. It's my connection to God. It's all connection, right? So connect, like it's what it means to you, right? Celebration to me means health and vitality. You only dance at a celebration because you've got the health and vitality to be able to do that, right? Um, Celebration, people go, what what health? Like what, that, that, what? That doesn't make sense, right? Um, Contribution to me means purpose. So what they mean to you is, you know, is unique to you. And so you pull out the words that matter the most. And now you've actually got your values, right, pretty well laid out. And then I ask you to do a first pass and just intuitively sort of rank them in order of what you think is most important to you. You're probably going to get it wrong. Yeah, but rank them in order of what you think is most important to you. And you've got your first pass of your values. When I say you get it wrong, like maybe one is meant to be two, two is meant to be three. Now, in response to your question, how do we really find out whether, and that takes 20 minutes, right? Um, Now, how do we really find out whether they're right for us or whether they're not? So what you'll do is the bonus step I invite people to do, and this is all in in the masterclass, is put them in your phone, right? Write them on a notes pad, get them in your phone and walk around with your values. And for the next month or two or three, however long it takes you, audit your interactions with people, positive, like the the good ones, the really good ones, and the really bad ones against your values. Just pull out that notepad. And so I'll give you an example. And this is an example I use all the time, but nonetheless, it's a really easy one to lean into. So we were checking out of our building at some point. We were renting in Melbourne City at some point, and we were you had to book an elevator to move your goods out of the elevator. And so we tried to book the goods elevator, but the building manager was just this, he wasn't a cool guy. Like he was just one of those people just a bit of a douchebag. Just toxic. <laughs> just like one of those guys. Anyway, we went in, we had the chat with him, we booked our thing. My wife was there, now wife, then girlfriend. We, we did the whole thing. We got out of there. As we got out, we're punching the elevator down to just go back to our, our, our apartment. And she looks at me, she goes, hey, why didn't you say something to him that it's not okay to speak to people like that? And I first, and I was young, right? So I'm like, shit, I'm not the man my wife, my girlfriend needs me to be. Like I could have totally spiralled out of control. Like my masculinity could have, like not out of control, but you get it, like spiralled yeah. into this like, yeah, oh, reacted. I'm not the right man, you know, like and like not even lashed out or just internally just kind of like lost the plot, like, oh, I'm not the right man for my wife. Anyway, what came up for me was like, oh, let me just, I pulled out my phone and looked at my values and I was like connection, contribution, celebrate. I didn't want to connect to the guy. There was nothing I wanted to contribute to him. There was nothing I wanted him to really contribute. I just wanted to, like I went in there to get my lift and get celebration, uh -uh, right? So there was none of me that wanted to spend any minute longer than I needed to in that environment. Yeah. And the interesting thing happens is as you get clearer on your values, you and you probably get this with human design, right? Like you knowing your human design so well, you can sort of glance over and go, I bet you that's a projector. 
or I bet you that's a manifest. Like you can just do that. How do you do? You just it just happens as you get clearer on yourself, your self awareness. You be you become able to decode others. Um, not that you're trying to read them, but it it veils itself to you. So I looked over to my and I was like, oh holy shit, your highest value is integrity. Mm. And I just read that in that moment, and I was like, of course. So Mrs. Integrity here. That sounds rude, but Mrs. Integrity. I'll be Mr. Connection. Mrs. Integrity here is like that person needs to know that it's not okay. Of course, someone in their integrity needs to let that person know that it's not okay to speak to people that way. Yep. But Mr. Connection's here like, hey, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's just move right? along. And yeah. so that whole interaction, like all my, my spiral just, just evaporated. Yeah. I was just like, oh, okay, like this is really helpful, knowing my values, like, I can see where she's coming from. I can see where I'm coming from. I was never going to be that guy, but it's totally fine because I know what value I bring to the relationship, to the world, to others. I'm the connection guy, right? Yeah. And so in that point, I just got really comfortable. Now, had I had have had, let's say, contribution on top of connection, you know, it's, I could have run the gambit and gone, oh, okay, what can, what contribution, I like, I really wanted to contribute to my wife, her values are integrity. Maybe I should have done that right. I did want to get the lift. In that moment, I could have run the order and gone, ah, actually, it turns out I didn't want to connect to that guy. So then I put connection on top of contribution. So then yeah. you work your, then you work the list and you kind of run it past through the interactions. So you might have an instance where, you know, you, you had the value of freedom, but you also had the value of prosperity, right? And it's like, hey, like I really want to build wealth and save for a home, but I ended up taking that trip. Why? And initially you had the value of prosperity on top and freedom below. And it's like, actually freedom and adventure means more to me. I just exhibited that in my life, right? Yeah. Now that list on your phone, massage that out, like put it in the right order that your life is naturally exhibiting. These are what your values are. And you come face to face with your authentic values. The way I describe them is that your values are the pillars of the temple that is you. And the reason I get to say that is because I'm Indian and it sounds really cool. They're the pillars of the <laughs> temple that is you. My body is a temple. Anyway, I should really not do that on live, on camera, <laughs> on air. Anyway, Aussie's life could like a good laugh. So here we are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? So they're the pillars of the temple that is you. And when I say the pillars of the temple, to get clearer, after having done 500 of these spirituality episodes on the podcast now, everybody says the same thing. You're, you've got uh, a spirit and an ego. There's God and ego. There's spirit and personality, soul and personality, higher self, lower self. Pick your languaging, right? But there's a higher self and there's a lower self, right? There's a, I like personality and soul. It seems to be languaging that everybody gets. So the pillars of the temple are the pillars of your personality, mm. right? This is the personality. This is the meat suit. This is the the mind suit that you're wearing in this life. So those are your values. And that's what you're propped up against. When I'm experiencing connection, I'm in flow. When I'm contributing, I'm happy. When I'm celebrating, I'm in joy. Yeah. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's all happening for me. Things are zinging. We're in flow states in those periods. And that's the name of the book that's coming out, Meta Flow, right? Because mm -hmm. it's that flow that you experience when you're in alignment to your values, when you zoom out, right? And you're on purpose, Meta Flow, flow from a really high level, touch wood. Mm -hmm. So in there, what are we trying to do is your soul still exists and it's trying to pour into your life. We talk about the hero's journey. Like you've got your yep. soul signs up for lessons. I think this audience is familiar with that, right? Yep. Yep. Your and soul, soul sign signed up for a fair few. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so it's here to live its lessons. Now, oftentimes we're sort of facing a different orientation, but if we can line up to our values, I sort of see it like a camera. The aperture of the light lines up in just the right way for maximum amount of soul presence to flow into your life when you're in alignment to your values. Yeah. And that's where they're the pillars of the temple of your personality. And when you get clear on that, everything like now when I, mind value, you spoke about having love for mind value before they, they approached me and they said, Hey, we want to set up a coaching program. Um, we've gone into COVID. We had a bunch of you trainers training all over the world. You did amazing work, but would you be interested in becoming a coach? I quickly went, do I get to connect? Yes. Do I get to contribute? Yes. Do I get to celebrate? Yes. I'm a yes. And they're like, oh, no, you can get back to us tomorrow. I'm like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm a yes. I didn't discuss finances. I didn't discuss terms of contract. I didn't come to contract duration. Like there was none of those qualification conversations, which I should have had, that happened because I knew this was for me. Yeah. 
And now I get opportunities to touch wood through the Inspired Evolution because it's growing left, right, and center. And I often audit them and I just go through my values and I'm like, this is an amazing opportunity. Go back to my engineering career. Incredible opportunity. There was just no connection, some contribution, very little uh, celebration. It's an amazing opportunity. It's just not the right opportunity for Amrit. Yeah. Right? That's someone else's value set is waiting to just plug into that. Yeah. Yeah. But my value set was waiting for coaching, speaking, podcasting. Yeah, I love that. Um, a couple of things have come up. The, the first thing, again, my line five is very practical. I'm like, okay, cool. Now we have them. Mm. We're aware that we're not living in alignment with them. How do we kind of shift and change? Like you said, with your job, obviously, they were not in alignment with your values. Mm. I think sometimes when we really do discover the things that are important, and we experiment, like you said, like, okay, we'll just move it further up if you find that freedom is actually going to be the thing that you're making decisions on, which I totally resonate. Like freedom's right up the top for me. Mm. And, you know, it's taken me until I was, I think, like I'm 49 now. It was only over the last two years. And I'm like, yeah, we bought a house once and I hated it. I'm like, I just, I don't want that. I want the freedom to be able to move. Like we travelled around Australia for a year with kids and, um, But now I'm like, okay, I want to buy a house. I want to put down roots here. But literally Mm. the moment I have the opportunity to travel, I'm like, okay, I'm out. Fuck the house. Um, So I know that's really hot. Exactly, right? But the version of me, let's say I'm, you know, in my mid-20s, I'm in the advertising industry. Mm. Freedom was still one of my values, but I was not living into that. Maybe Mm. I, you know, let's just do some, um, you know, changing our timelines. So I'm actually at 25, I come across your values work and I'm like, cool. Mm. Okay. Now I know that it's freedom, but how do we actually physically shift that? Like if we're in this life that we now realize is really out of alignment for us, what are the steps that we need to take to get into alignment with these values? Okay. A little bit of courage is definitely going to be required. Yeah. yeah. Um, but let's, let's, let's not gloss over that, but let's just Park that into the conversation for a sec. But it's called the inspired evolution for a reason. Yeah. Um, I was inspired by all of these people. Like, you know, we talk about this, the dark night of the soul and then coming back with a sword. I was inspired by people such as yourself that were coaches, speakers, podcasters, entrepreneurs, spiritual entrepreneurs, creatives, living life on their own terms in their own way. Yeah. And obviously the manifesto in me was like, bing. That's what yeah, I should be doing. Me. It's like, I'm not meant to be generating nine to five. Anyway, you know, like we could totally talk yeah. <laughs> more about that. But that's the, I was inspired by certain people. Yeah. So I could see like Tony Robbins. I could see Vishen Lakiani. I could see Mel Robbins. I could see people doing incredible work in the world, having the impact that I wanted to have. And I, I didn't need to check with me. Like I just, I was watching their videos online all the time. I was reading their books, Tim Ferriss. I was reading all his books. Um, you know, it's, 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 you can't turn off soul. Like you can't turn your values off. They're always being expressed. You've like, they've been hijacked. Sure. But your true self is ever present underneath all of that. Right. If we can just dust off all the hijacked stuff, right. Your true self is actually right there. And so what are your inspirations? And the interesting thing is a quick little, nugget here is inspiration, motivation. Motivation is something that can pump up your tires to get you to the gym for a few moments. It's very external. Yeah. Inspiration is that thing where you look at it and you go, see how I took a breath in? Mm. I inspired. I took a breath in. Inspire, right? Like I literally, it caused me to draw in more prana. Like it brings me life. Yeah. So inspired it's what are the people that you look around, you go, oh, my God, like I'd love to do that. And if there's a little bit of envy in there, awesome. Start there, right? Start yeah. there, yeah? So oh, that's truly what I want to do in the world, yeah? Those are your inspirations. So start there and get clear on who inspires you, what inspires you. And from there we can start to have the conversation of do you have the courage to evolve and take the next steps towards that direction, right? So you've gotten clear on your values, but then what does it really look like, yeah? And the easy thing is to look around. Now, this is going to sound hella loaded because I'm a coach and a mentor, but 
anyway, people, you don't have to sign up to a coach and a mentor. I would argue that these people that I was listening to their content online were coaching and mentoring me from afar for the longest time Yeah, 100%. until I became who I was and then started actually like paying and for coaching and mentoring and relationships anyway. Right. Um, and then we built relationships and now some of these people are my friends. It's trippy as, but nonetheless, that's how it all goes. Um, when you're on an inspired path, touch wood. So that's how it starts. Yeah. So get clear. And then allow that, that sort of coaching, mentoring sort of thing to start. If you can actually enlist the services of a coach or a mentor, even better, right? Because then you accelerate yourself through all their challenges. Like they would have made, I've, I've got a client right now who's just started out as a coach. Yeah. We've been working on his limiting beliefs around how much he should charge, et cetera, et cetera. And he's priced himself. He secured his first client at my current rate. Yeah. Wow. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> that's, I'm so happy for you. But part of me is like, what the fuck? <laughs> Touch wood, right? And I, because like I've built myself up to my current rate yeah. and he's just started at that rate, yeah? And that's the power of a mentor. That's the power yeah. of a coach, yeah? You, yeah? you accelerate your journey. If you can get it from afar, perfect. If you can build it intimately, even better. So that's what I would prescribe as the very best next step is to start to feel into your inspirations, get that coaching, get that mentoring, get that guidance, allow that to filter in. Sometimes that person that you're looking up to might have a, you might not be able to afford coaching. Maybe they've got a course and that's all you can take on board. Get it, do it, smash it, enjoy it. Allow that wisdom to steep into you. Yeah. Online content, like there's heaps of information online. The free stuff is not as good as the pay stuff. I'm telling you now. Yeah. But like, you know, like one of the things I've just finished the call with one of my communities this morning and like one of the things that is so important and kind of comes back to what you just said is like, there is so much free content out there. There is no one freaking takes action on it. You know, like that was one of the things for me that I was so like, we had no money when I started this journey and I was yep. like, okay, I'm taking responsibility. And it's my number one principle when it comes to coaching to changing your life it's like you need to take responsibility for mm -hmm. the life that you're creating mm -hmm. and I also appreciate there's a lot of people that are very specifically marketing you into a corner where it's not you know they give you the problem but not the solution but yeah it's a bit sleazy but yeah I think there's a lot of like I want to say to people there are you don't have to necessarily just like you were kind of leading into you don't need, need to necessarily pay the massive amounts of money to work with people one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. you've got to start where you're at until you can do that and the interesting thing there, though, is, and I was just reflecting on my own self at the moment, and this is a bit vulnerable, but I'll give this the, the share. So uh, about 12 months, 18 months ago, I signed up for a YouTube program, which was amazing, with Ali Abdal, for those that want to go check out PTYA, incredible program. Shout out to Ali. Um, and I went through his program, and he's, as part of that, he's gifted all these extra resources. And one of the resources he's gifted me is like this business development, YouTube business development program. And my business is going well, but I'm looking to sort of see how I can make it scalable. You know, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching and it's like, what is, and I'm obsessed with one-to-one -one coaching. It's my favorite thing. Connection, but now with young baby. kids, I know, right? And I'm like, <laughs> nothing is as good as this. Why do I even, like, I shouldn't even bother, right? But the challenge is as my rates continue to grow, it's like, you've got a free podcast and you've got this, you know, you've got a, yeah. you've got one-to-one -one coaching rates. What's, how do people meet you in the, in between? Because I used to have 100%. courses and programs. And so now it's like, I need something to help people, right? So I'm trying to find what that thing is. Now, Ali's got, as part of the program, he gifted another course, which was in there. Now, I had that course and I set myself the task to do that course, right? And I, I don't know for those that know the bullet journal. Anyway, like that task kept migrating month on month. So you, you got your task for the month. And that was a task was like, start this course and it moved start this course and it moved, start this course and it moved. And I was just like, why is it? I was like, it's just busy and you're just not prioritizing around running the YouTube channel and doing all the things yeah. and the one-to-one -one coaching that you're doing. Now, it, for me, if something's been moving for six months, I have to stare at it in the face and go, I'm going to cross you off. Yeah. And at that point, it's like, I don't want to cross this off. And so at that point, as synchronicity would have it, another friend of mine who's in the YouTube space, um, Ed from Phil Booth, he's turned around and gone, hey, I'm putting together – a program for small businesses that want to create their first product offering to their YouTube channel. Um, do you, you keen? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, it costs this much though. And I'm like, good. And he goes, and for me, I had to look back in on myself and I was like, yeah, skin in the game. Yes. Right. Yeah. Like there's this thing about skin in the game. So that course was just sitting there and I looked at the content 
they're not dissimilar. Yeah. Thankfully, Ed's goes a little bit deeper because, you know, that was just a course Ali published, but Ed's actually coaching people, you know, so obviously there's a bit more around it. Um, but the content in like the actual content core skeleton of it is much the same. They're both creatives that have accomplished amazing things on YouTube. I could have just done that, but I probably wouldn't have. Yeah, because that would have kept lagging for another six months. Yeah. But because I put skin in the game and got some coaching around this, the power of a coaching and mentoring, I know it sounds super loaded because I'm a coach and a mentor, part of me for that bit. But because I put some skin in the game, it was like, whoa, okay, now you show up differently. No, I just yeah. invested this much to make this transformation happen for me. I get to go. Like, let's go. Let's get this done. Let's make it happen. Yeah. What's next? I engage differently. I show up differently. I apply myself differently. Yeah. And you're, you're absolutely right. You know, I, I think one of the, the things that everything that, that I've invested in that drives me, you know, like shit, I've spent money on this and I, I need to get it done. And it's really interesting because with my, my lowest end, we've just done this, just started this authentic success club. Mm. And like so many of, of my friends, oh my God, it's, it's freaking epic. I just ran the first class before this. Mm. And so many of my entrepreneurial friends are all like, it won't work because it's only $27 a month. Like it's not going to work. These people, because it's so cheap, it's, you know, they're not going to invest. They're not going to spend the time. They're not going to do the work. And me being me, I'm like, well, we can only run the experiment. But of course, I've also said to these people, you do realize that your conditioning says and the statistics are. And so can you all please be the rebels? Can you please yeah, be the rebels maverick. that actually <laughs> yeah. make a difference with what I'm giving you? Because this is one of the things for me, like this is what authentic success is. Like stop fucking listening to what everybody else tells you you can or you can't do. Mm. You know, learn and then experiment. Like give, like take everything. I mean, how much have you given people in what 40 minutes that we've been talking don't That's just it. sit there and go oh shit that was such a good episode what are you going to do about it are you going to go do the links in the yeah, show yeah no, go do the values gonna, yeah. <laughs> go get your values and I, and I think that this is the big <laughs> part like the issue that we're we're now facing is we have to take more responsibility for ourselves as students as business owners as you know in relationships we have to stop because we live in the like the information age and like you said Every second course is going to be really, really similar. Um, and now, like how many people have got all this personal development debt that they can't get rid of or they're mm. having tr t trouble paying down? And one of the big pieces for me is like, yeah, because we need to step into our power. We need to be really aware of, okay, well, yes, unconsciously, we know that the human brain is going to do more if you spend more on it. We know that that's how the brain works, but it doesn't have to be how the brain works. You can choose to invest your energy in something you pay 27 bucks on. Mm -hmm. That's the point. And for me, this is one of the big things in the work that I do is like, we must take our power back. We must stop um, letting ourselves, as you say, be hijacked. We have to actually get back in the power seat and you know, take the opportunities that are in front of us to completely transform our lives. Mm. Yeah, I totally agree. And I would say that the um, there's the, you're you're speaking to something there also that I um I had an inflection point at a certain point in the journey. And by the way, yeah, at no point do I advocate going into personal development in debt. If you're going into debt, you, no, <laughs> like at no point. I've, I've never done that and I've known people to do that and I think it's it's treacherous. Like I'm just like, what? You're buying personal development with money. Anyway, um, people will have different schools and thoughts on that. But anyway, back to the inflection point is this thing I called savior syndrome. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure if other people uh, struggle with it, but I always had this feeling and this is actually what was going on um, when I had a bit of a, a pivot into the inspired evolution because I was like, I had imposter syndrome going on. I was like, who's going to start up? Like everyone's like, you should start up. I was like, who's me start a podcast? What the, like, no. And <laughs> what was in there was this real, if I, when I really peeked under the hood with self-awareness, I found I was waiting for someone to come save me. Yeah. Maybe I was Indian and I was like, believed in gurus and stuff like that. I was like, you know, there's going to be someone that pulls me out of my current calamity. It is yeah. a calamity, but someone's coming to save me. And then at some point you realize you're the one you've been waiting for. Please, like you said, show the fuck up. Like that'd be so amazing 100%. if you could. 
And this whole breakdown has just been breaking down for you to break through into the place where you step into your, you know, shiny armor, basically. And you get into it and you go, whoa, like that was harrowing just for me to show up. And I'm glad I showed up, touch wood in the end. But that's, I think, that, you know, I, I call that, um, yeah, I call that the the saviour syndrome. <laughs> I was like waiting yeah. for a saviour. It's so true. I reckon I waited for that saviour for, you know, a good 15 years. Like I actually reflect on, I mean, and I've told you my story, like I've resisted human design initially because yeah, it's so I science found that hilarious. you know. Like, <laughs> no. Um, but I actually think that this is the thing that, ultimately healed my savior syndrome when all these other things were meant to save me once i actually understood my energetic blueprint i was like oh shit it really is me like yeah 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 i know i'm here i'm the one that is going to save me but it was when i really could trust it and i could lean into it and get super deep into it um because yeah ultimately everything that you're looking for all the answers they're they're within you and god that statement used to piss me off i'd be like <laughs> great because it feels true but how the hell do i get at it like how do i yeah. get at th this greatness that you talk of <laughs> like let me at it and yeah but i think it's that thing like the first step is just believing that you are the person you are the answers you are the solution you're looking for mm. Mm. so tell me about your book When's your book coming out? What's Oi, that all about? You putting me on the spot? Yeah, we're still writing it. We're still writing it. Calm down. <laughs> oh, it's like I'm generator. I'm over yeah, it. the <laughs> pulling it out of the manifesto. Good, yeah. great, great, great. Um, I should probably commit a date to you. That'd really <laughs> put some mm -hmm. fire under my bum. Um, yeah, we've set a loose target for for the for the end of the year. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so the book is called Metaflow. Um, mm -hmm. and it's all about living in alignment to your values as we've been discussing today. Mm -hmm. It goes into other corners as well, um, leans in a lot to my training from Eckhart Tolle in many ways, um, but then also we talk about, um, yeah, just how much we get hijacked. There's, there's, there's a whole piece on how you get hijacked, how to understand the hijacks, how to, you know, all that sort of stuff, and that's why I use the term hijack. Um, ultimately there's a big metaphor that, you know, is pinned in the book around this of the wave, right? Um, and when you, cause interestingly, when I got coached by Eckhart Tolle, the piece was presence and purpose. And as you can guys can probably tell, like I'm obsessed with purpose, purpose driven, yeah. value aligned, you know, that's, that's Amrit. Um, and I was like, Eckhart, whoa, whoa, buddy, buddy. Hey, 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 no, no. Back in the box, mate your presence. <laughs> you can't talk yeah. about purpose. Not that Amrit's trying to occupy that domain. <laughs> Very different. Anyway. Um, but I was like, dude, Eckhart, you're, you've nailed presence. Like you, like that's your whole brand. Like that's your whole thing. Like, dude, please, you don't, don't go into purpose. So I was intrigued. I was like, teach me about what your thoughts are on purpose. Mm. Long, 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 long story short. And then placed into a metaphor. I'll explain kind of what I'd got from it. And I'm sure he'll articulate it a different way, but there's two purposes at any given moment. The outer purpose of life itself at large and your own inner purpose for an individual. And it's not even just the individual. It's like I have one, the rock has one, the dumbbell has one, this water bottle has one, like, yeah. So that's inner purpose. Yeah. The wave, and this is the wave metaphor that I give you, right, this massive wave. I picture that Japanese, the big Japanese wave that everyone has yep. in their paintings. I recently found out the name of that thing and now it's escaping me again mm, um, because I've just learned it. Too, yeah, cool. Remember. So it's that big Japanese wave. Picture that. That's life. Life's going in its wave-like motion and it's doing its thing. It's this huge tidal wave. What's the purpose of life? Everyone's asked that question. No one's really come to the real answer. You know, we're here to learn and grow. Sure. Like I'm on board. Yeah. But that's as close as we've gotten, right? Um, for those that want to know what my thoughts are, read Andy Weir's The Egg. It's the shortest story you'll ever read with the most amount of truths condensed into like the shortest read ever. Is that and the same as the video? Have you seen the video, The Egg? If there's, yes, then. Yes. If someone's made it a video on it, epic. God bless them. God like, bless them. Showed right? our kids. It's that is everything. Fantastic. That is everything, so cool. right? So that's the life, the purpose of life. Your purpose is to be one of those water molecules in that massive wave that is life. Yeah. And I just call that the wave model because I'm an engineer and I'm creative. Like that, right. And so in there, what we find is most people are trying to be a molecule that they're not. 
So they're all trying, and this is where you get hijacked. Well, you're trying to be the tip of the wave, which what does the tip of the wave look like? I could ask anybody in any country. And it's like white picket fence, family, house, red car in the driveway, live life at 65 when you're finally retired. Yeah, that sounds awful. Right? But that's that's pretty much what white picket fence, yeah. like that's what the, the, cons, like, the consensus the in mainstream today. media and the conditioning is, is like this is who we're meant to be and this is what you need to buy. Yeah. And so we're all hijacked by media, by whatever you want to call it. It's a whole other podcast unto itself, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, and that's in the book, right? So that's all the hijacking. And so the opportunity avails yourself to go, hey, what are my true values, right? And we go back to the values conversation and that helps you identify your personality, your place in the wave. And it's like, oh, I'm connection, contribution, celebration. I'm not meant to be at the tip of the wave. I'm meant to be on the back here, like facing out at the horizon. Look how beautiful the sunset is. Yeah. You know, like I'm not meant to be yeah. staring in on the barrel. Cool. Yeah. Right. And just the amount of ease and peace you get when you start to live into your place, your purpose in life. It's yeah. like, you know, I don't, yeah, it starts with, you know, we are the universe looking in on itself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. we can't it. drive much about that. Like what what can we say about that other than the universe must be curious. So your curiosity is sacred to you right? Like your curiosity is actually sacred. And that's where the hijack conversation starts. Like, what are you genuinely curious about? What has society hijacked you to be curious about? Yeah. Come back to what you're innately curious about. You'll find underpinning your, what we then coin sacred curiosity are your values. These are your sacred values. And now your soul can flow into that because the universe wants to see, wants to experience all these incredible things around those around those values through that filter of that person that is you yeah i love that there's That's so much so more i'm just trying to <laughs> grab it as much well, as i can you. yeah well uh-huh. it's a good job you you're doing a good job <laughs> you know i often one of the metaphors i'll often use from a human design perspective when we're talking about purpose and you know maybe we're talking about incarnation crosses whatever it is but the point is it's like the person who you know, let's say changes billions of lives is Mm. equally as important to the person that tends their garden every day, Mm. you know, that that is their purpose. And the reason why is consciousness, Mm -hmm. because when you, you know, that the higher your consciousness goes, the more you live in love, in alignment with your personal truth, the greater your uh, contribution to the whole. So, yeah, I love that. I think the wave, the wave metaphor is, is brilliant. And, you know, just, because this is the human design podcast, you're an emotional authority. So the fact that one of your models is the wave, I'm like, hmm, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I learned, you know, when you were on my podcast, um, the the garden of the garden of Eden, the the Eden, yeah, the Eden you know, Eden. yeah, uh, I thought that it's was so, really so cool, you know, because it's like trying to lead people back to the promised land of hey, living in alignment of your values. It's like hey, yeah. we can be Eden if we just if we just align to our values and everybody did happy work. Like, anyway, yeah. it was really insightful having you on. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm. And what was really cool was just after I met with you, um, I was talking to my eldest son and I got his girlfriend's details. Yeah. She was a cross of Eden as well. Yeah. And I was telling um, my son, I'm like, well, you have to pay attention to the incarnation crosses that come into your life because your aura Um, that's what they need you know so Mm. at some point I needed the energy to recreate Eden and Mm. you know I'm in a time where um, I separated from my husband he Mm. has literally moved on and Mm. it's like right okay we need to I need to create my new Eden but the cool thing was is so my son I'm talking about um, his girlfriend with him and he's like I did her chart I'm like she's a cross of Eden and I talked a little bit about the cross of Eden and Coop literally says, wow, mum, because I feel like she's healed my fear of relationships after you and dad split up. I'm like, fuck, there it is right there, you know, like, you know, like all the things that he was afraid of, instead of running, he would have the conversation or he would do the healing or whatever. I'm like, you just can't make this shit up. Like this is yeah. how beautifully we all just fit together we all work together like and this is energy that's happening without us even he had no conscious awareness that that was what was going on Mm. you know like um and and even to the point where you know i have 
I love the incarnation cross thing. And by the way, my cross is mm. all about community. So uh, on some level, you're at this place like, what does my community need? Well, um, as you can tell, <laughs> exactly yeah, where I'm at right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So yeah, and when we really just allow the our human design and just get, like you said, one of my favorite um, mantras is, you know, be be curious, not judgmental. Mm. And when we get super curious about our design and the truth that that lies beneath, because I do believe, and I think you kind of referenced it, you know, there is this thing beneath our personality. And um, for me, a lot of that is that energetic blueprint of our human design. It's like our soul's like, these are the energies we're going to need. Let's bring mm. all this in. Um, but yeah, and just on your design, it's so cool just to hear uh your journey you know and that you have such great success with the podcast and you know the 1222 is a really important channel for you like it's that is one of your um manifested channels and it's very much about having this this incredibly powerful and influential voice so Uh, so yeah yeah. very cool stuff but anyway i just realized it's 555 and 55 at least 55 (laughs) minutes and 55 seconds on my thing right now so i actually have to let you go amrit it's been amazing where can people find you how can they i mean i know all the links so far we will put in the show notes but where else can they find you yeah absolutely so there's two places um i highly encourage everybody make their way over to youtube um, check out the Inspired Evolution um, on YouTube. It's the home of the podcast. It doesn't mean we're not on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes. We're everywhere. Everywhere a podcast can live and breathe and exist, we have found our little way there. Um, but it really feels like YouTube just has this really incredible space where people are commenting and I'm commenting back and we're just building. It's just it's it's sensational so i love it um so youtube really does feel like the home of the inspired evolution podcast um so yeah find us on youtube hit subscribe get encouraged to follow into the conversation subscribe and at the very least watch emma's conversation on the inspired evolution podcast i got a lot out of that one um so you guys will too um so that's over there and for those that are interested in maybe taking a little bit deeper how you've done your values thing don't forget to do your values thing, amrit.life forward slash values. Oh, sorry, amrit.coach forward slash values um, and inspiredevolution.com forward slash values. Um, then, yeah, you can make your way over to the website, which is amrit.coach. If you make your way to amrit.coach, um, you'll find out anything re- coaching related. Um, and as you can tell, connection, contribution, celebration. I love doing one-to-one coaching. So, yeah, come so home around me. I love it. That is freaking epic. And I just am curious from one podcaster to another, can you give me like your favorite interview or top three? Like what are the ones that have stood out for you in, what did you say, 500 episodes? Like, oh, 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 you could do that to me. I should have um, given you a little yeah. warning. Today, um, yes. One of them is definitely Marianne Williamson when she was running for her um, presidential campaign uh, a few yeah, years awesome. ago, all those years ago. Um, she talked about love and power and how love without power is anemic power without love is corrupt Um, and that was really huge because I think a lot of us attribute hippie hippies walking around with these massive hearts and just going it's all love Um, but actually we need to like you said been saying today like we've been discussing is finding ways to step into your power Um, and that was huge to really like it is about like the power of love but don't forget the power of yeah, love, yeah. right? Um, so that was huge. Oof, there's been so many. Um, there's a really interesting conversation we had with another gentleman. Um, his name is Shai Tabali, a lesser, lesser known gentleman, um, but he blends Eastern philosophy with Western psychology. He's actually like matriculated both quite, quite well, and he's an Israeli guy. Um, One of the big things I took away from his, like our conversation, um, was this thing about spirituality and, uh, well, lots of things about how spirituality, mental health, and how people at a certain point psychology taps out and then you end up in spiritual land and you start to notice that when people pass away because there's only so much psychology can do for them. It's like, oh, sorry, they're in their dying stages. There's only so much psychology can do them. That's when they come back to spirit land, right? And they meet religion or meet faith or meet spirit you know, incredible conversation, right? That's just one portal we went into. One of the things he said in there is you find pseudo-spirituality hanging out quite a bit. And I was like, ooh, 
Okay, tell me about pseudo spirituality. And the thing he mentioned was spirituality does not make you more sensitive, right? It does open you up. Like, yes, you are more sensitive, more dialed in, but it doesn't make you, like the core of you, more like, oh, like, I don't want to sound like this, but ah, oh, chemtrails. Yeah. And I know that's going to trigger some people. So I'm sorry because I'm connection. I really didn't want to do that. But you asked the question, right? But that particular podcast, the thing that he said was spirituality makes you stronger, Yeah. right? You lean into your spirituality so your container becomes stronger, becomes bigger, so then you can actually contain more. And that's why you see spiritual teachers holding space for other people's traumas, right? Like it's that they've got a really strong container. Right, they're not they're not susceptible to that person's trauma, and they're able to hold space for that said trauma. Now, I'm not saying we should all be walking around testing our spirituality by trying on people's trauma, but that piece around um, spirituality and it strengthens you rather than you becoming more like, oh, now I'm sensitive to this, and now I'm sensitive to this, and you're encroaching and falling back into more and more fear. Right, yeah. spirituality is love, right? Yeah. And so that was a really profound conversation oh for me. Yeah, touch and part of me for that chemtrails example. I, I really, I'm not yeah, normally yeah. like that. I try not to trigger too many people again. Connection. Um, a third. Oh, is that enough for now? Sure. <laughs> just like, okay. I'll take two. I'll take two. Cool. There's uh, obviously the one with Emma Dunwoody was incredible. <laughs> I, I learned about I'm trying to create Eden on Earth through the inspired evolution. That was really yeah, yeah. profound for me as well. Um, yeah. There's always something to take away. There's definitely always something to I take away. I just love it. It's 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 so great to speak to you, Emirate. I You have such a generous energy and oh, um, touch so much wisdom in there. So thank you so much for joining me here on the human design podcast and um yeah i just want to say congratulations on all the epic stuff that you're putting out in the, world <laughs> and the human that you are so well done you oh uh, touch thank you so much sister man it means a lot to me coming from you like you've done so much in the world that i look up to and yeah just uh yeah really honored and really humbled to be here so thank you so much for having me and uh yeah really excited for See my name on your podcast. Oh my yep, God. The old me made it. I did it. Here I am. <laughs> Touch with. Thank you so much for having Love me, it. Sister Bear. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for listening. I trust you got what you needed from today's episode. And I so look forward to having you on the next one. Bye for now. Thanks, everyone, for being here all the way to the end of the podcast. I hope you got lots of value out of it. I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. Could I please ask that you share this podcast with friends if you found it valuable? And also, bonus points, could you leave a review for me as well on Apple? It would be greatly appreciated. If at any point you would like to be on the podcast or you've got questions that you'd like me to discuss on the podcast, by all means, get on my socials and DM me. Everything you need is there in the show notes. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.